Every single Monday morning, I am picking, packing, and posting my weekend sales orders. And this weekend, we actually had a few come through. A total of 26 sales, $896 in revenue, fees of $112 at 15%, $253.50 in postage, cost of goods just $94. We've made a cash flow of $436.56. So I thought it'd make for a really cool video today to take through the entire process that I get up to every single Monday morning, picking, packing, and posting my weekend sales orders. I sell out of four main categories, shoes, clothes, books, and DVDs. So let's go and get into the first category, show you how many shoes sold over the weekend. Now, considering I have so many pairs of shoes in all of these tubs, I only had one pair of shoes sell over the weekend. And it was these Birkenstocks that I picked up in a garage sale for $3 literally two days ago. They sold on the very same day that I listed them. There was a bit of toe damage, as you can see right there. And I did mention that in the description they still ended up selling for $40. Now, it was an international sale as well, so I'll put $20 worth of international postage, so the total revenue for these shoes are $60. Now, if they were in better condition, they probably would have sold for $60 plus postage. So there's some really good money in the Birkenstocks, just the one pair of shoes. Let me show you how I ship them internationally. Now, I still am doing my international postage by just filling out the customer declaration form with the pen, but the process with the international postage is all per the weight. So you wanna be making sure that you're below a certain weight category. Now, I've just got the kitchen scales here. So if I whack these Birkenstocks onto here, I want it to be under 500 grams. And as you can see, 445 grams. So if I go across to the Australia Post uh, website, you can have a look at the payment rates and we're gonna be working off, now I've put in Canada here for this one because this is where it's going. Um, I've put up the top here, the weight being 0.45 kilo and then it's gonna be sent standard international. So $24 will be the postage cost, but I've got the Australia Post My Business Plan discount. So these should go on to sell for $18 worth of post, and I've charged the buyer $20. So all in all, a pretty fair result there when it comes to postage. The Birkenstocks have sold for $42, $18 to send it off after discount. So the next category is books, and I've phased out of selling books. So I've only got a few left, and once they all sell, that'll be it. I won't be buying any more, but I've been able to sell these, the, the Monsters High Kids Book Series. Now, I do my books as a bundle, typically. I bought all of these for a dollar each. So these nine books have gone on to sell for $39.99, which I think is a really good price. Now, that's gonna be a profit of about 20 bucks. I'll show you the process now as to how I ship out these book bundles. So I've just finished bubble wrapping my book bundle. That's typically how I start things off. I always bubble wrap the, uh, the book bundles up. Now, I typically use the Australia Post flat rate satchels. You can buy these in bundles of 100, small, medium, large, extra large. This one won't quite fit in a small or a medium satchel though. So I do have the A3 courier satchels, just the plain satchels. I buy them for about 60 cents each, packets of 10. It's something like that. Uh, I get them from Officeworks and, and that one will fit in perfectly. So. I'm gonna do this, whack it in there just like that, fits in perfectly, and then I'll sticky tape it up as well, whack a label on it and send that one off. So I don't put them in boxes generally, I generally put them in the satchels when I do my book bundles, but it's typically always bubble wrap first before it goes in. All right, the next category is clothing. We had seven items of clothing sell over the weekend. Three of them came in the one order. So I'll take you through those ones first. The first item that he purchased was a long sleeve Tommy Hilfiger button up shirt. That one sold for $28. I typically sell them for about 28 to 30 bucks. So that was fairly standard. The other one here is a Ralph Lauren, just a plain gray t-shirt. That one sold for $20. And then he also bought a pair of Levi Strauss 505 men's jeans. Now these were a 32 waist, a 32 length. A total cost there of $48 was the price on those jeans. So a total of $96 worth of revenue in the order for the three items. I can actually go ahead and post them all into the same satchel and it's gonna save me a heap of money on postage costs because remember, when I'm selling off these items, I have a free postage model. So I'm catering in the postage cost for every single one of them. And then when I can do a three for one type scenario, it's just a huge win for me at the end of the day. So $96, $15 in postage costs brings it down to around about say $80. I would have bought it all for about 20 bucks. So in the end, I'm probably gonna make myself a good $40 worth of profit on these three clothing items. So nothing too fancy when it comes to the clothing. I don't put any protective covering or anything like that on the items. I just literally try and fold them up 
as nice as I can, keeping it all nice and even, and then try and find the uh, tightest <laughs> appropriate satchel. Now, it actually fits into a medium satchel, so the maximum weight of five kilos is no issue with these clothing items. But the, uh, the cost for me is actually going to be less than I thought. It's only going to cost $10 because it's not a large satchel. It's a medium satchel that these items can fit into. So in the end, this will only cost me $10 to ship off, which I'm really, really happy about because I thought it was going to be $15. So profit in the end for these items is now somewhere between $45 to $50, which is just awesome. There you go. Look at that. Medium satchel. Now, I say $10 because I'm on the Australia Post My Business Plan, guys. That's the reason why this is a little less. Normally, it would be about $12 odd, but I'm saving money every time with a band five My Post discount. So please take in that uh, into consideration when you're seeing me talk about these postage costs. All right, I've got three more items of clothing to take you through here. The first one actually has just come through. I didn't have this as a part of my initial numbers. It's a Socceroos Nike Genuine uh, Football Jersey. So nothing on the back of this one, but I've still been able to get a best offer of $32. So I would have paid uh, a couple of dollars for it in the thrift. I had 35 listed, happy to take a $32 on best offer. A pretty quick sell-through rate on that one. Another one as well is this Tommy Hilfiger men's t-shirt. This is a size large. Very good condition, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, did only sell for $20 though, and I've really got to take note of that because it's only a $12 sale price. I bought it for about $6. There's just no profit, so why are you bother buying it? Um, so I've taken note of that, probably won't be doing that again. Also found this one as well. Now this one was a brand that I found just for the first time. The brand is MacPack. I've personally never heard of it, personally never sold it, but this one came through with a $58 sale price. Brand new condition as well, excellent. And uh, I only paid $2 for it in the thrift, if you can believe. So some huge profit on the Mac pack. Um, definitely a brand to be looking out for. Guys, these three clothing items have ended up selling for a total of $110 on eBay. You've got to take out fees and posts, cost of goods, but I've probably made myself about a $50 profit on three individual items of clothing yet again. Now, I won't show you how to ship these items because I've just done that with the three other items that sold for a $50 profit. I'll be sending these all off to individual buyers. I'll be putting them into a small satchel and the postage costs should be about $7.15 each. Now, for those of you who watched my recent trip to the thrift episode just last Thursday, in a $3 clothing rack, I've found these Footjoy men's performance golf pants, charcoal gray, excellent condition, 34 waist, 32 length. And uh, all the indicators here with this one were telling me top dollar. I've ended up getting a sale price of $79.95 off a $3 purchase, a 48 hour sale cycle. So they've moved incredibly fast. Shipping will be $7.15, putting them into a small satchel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And then the last clothing item was a pair of jeans and it should be these ones here, the Demi Curve. Levi Strauss, uh, mid-rise, slim, size six. So these end have ended up selling for $38, and that's a very typical sale price for me when it comes to selling my jeans. Um, so 38 bucks, I'm looking to try and get $30 for them, and um, I only paid about four or five bucks for them in the thrift. So there should be a really quick sort of $17 to $20 profit on these jeans, and like I said, that's pretty typical. Um, in a sense of postage, again, it'll just get folded up and put into a small satchel for $7.15. The real winner though, guys, has been the DVDs. I've had some really good results. I've been able to sell 15 just this weekend alone for a total of $338.50. So I've just finished looking them out, and this is all of them right here in front of us. So all of these have been the weekend winners, and I brought the best down the bottom here. So this one was the best performing sale of the weekend from a sense of the DVDs, a Thief in the Night Collector's Series. This is actually sold for $50, and uh, I wouldn't have known anything about this one, to be honest with you. It was just part of this bundle that I've bought off Facebook Marketplace for 50 cents. All of these DVDs were bought for 50 cents, remember, guys. Um, so I'm only about a $7.50 investment in for a $338 return. I'm, I'm still blown away that these DVDs actually sell. Um, but yeah, 50 bucks for that. Um, Colchak, I bought that in a garage sale. Um, wholesale bundle on Saturday. I've already sold it for $42.50. Uh, Fringe has sold internationally for $40. Um, that's a Region 1 DVD. So Regions 1 uh, do still go on to sell. Uh, Clan of the Cave Bear. This one sold for $29.50. Uh, Daryl Hanna. Haven't heard of this one, haven't seen it, but $29.50 for a DVD is epic. Uh, Into the West. That one sold for $25. So Steven Spielberg. Four discs, that's definitely something to look for when you're out there hunting DVDs. 
This was a, a five movie DVD pack that I picked up in the same garage sale as Kolchak just on Saturday. That one ended up selling on a best offer for $23. So that was a good one. And then just, just then actually, this one has come through Fringe as well. So I've sold Fringe internationally region one, and this one is a blue, uh, Blu-ray region four has sold for $22.50 as well. So $338 overall. These were a little bit cheaper between $10 to $15. The average sale price for all of these DVDs sold is $22.50 which I just think is just crazy. Now, I ship all these off in a large tracked envelope for $4.50. I'll show you how I do that now, and we're gonna go ahead and get all of these put into envelopes. Now, I have spoken about this quite a bit on the channel, but this is how I send my DVDs. There's a tracking number right there. I put that on the back of the uh, the tear-off part here of the envelope. Now, this is a $4.50 uh, tracked large envelope from Australia Post. I buy bundles of 10 for $45 typically buying 100 at a time. So I'm generally spending about 450 bucks um, because I am just selling so many DVDs and I personally choose to send them with a tracking number. I know a lot of other people out there, maybe if you're doing it casually, you're not trying to run a business from it, can put them into a large white envelope and you can send it off for about $2.80, but then it's not tracked and there's no guarantee you're not gonna run into issues down the line if the item doesn't get received. So considering I'm doing so many, I'm happy to wear the additional cost to cover myself with a track number and they are just a simple process to just whack a sticker on there and then go ahead and uh, and send it off for $4.50. So I've got a number here to do. I've got 15 to do today and uh, believe it or not, it actually doesn't take that long to do. They're a very, very simple item to ship and they're also a simple item to buy and sell as well. So I love DVDs, 15 more to go, $338, just absolutely madness. The other thing that I should just quickly mention on these DVDs is the standard DVD will always fit in the large envelope Australia Post track that we just spoke about. I've got three of the 15 here though that are slightly larger cases. And for those, what I typically go and do is put them into a small satchel, $7.15. I wear the additional cost. I just put them in a satchel. Um, maybe I'll bubble wrap them. Generally, I don't and I've still never had any concerns. So just wanted to let you know about that. Not all DVDs are gonna be the standard DVD size. Sometimes they'll be a little bit larger. Whack them into a satchel. All right, all of the DVDs are now done. So they all took about maybe 25 minutes to complete all of that. So a really quick shipping process, considering there were so many of them. This one I couldn't do because I don't have any more international satchels. So I'm gonna do that one at the post office. Um, that one should turn into about an $18 cost uh, because it will be under the 500 grams. I'll be able to put it into a small satchel. So DVDs are done. We've just got one other category and I call that one MISC, which is just an assortment of all the other sort of items that have sold as well. And the first one is one of my many board games. If I can reach him right up the very top. I grabbed this one at a trip to the thrift video uh, just last Thursday. I only paid $4 for it and it's Gossip Girl. So this one's actually gone and sold to a viewer. So a big thank you to the viewer of the channel that has bought this one, but uh, it ended up selling on a best offer for $30. And I'm gonna show you how I ship it out right now. The first process is actually to cover it up in uh, butcher's paper. So I'll do that first, and then I'm gonna cover it up with some, uh, some bubble wrap after that, and then just put a label on the top of it. So I'll quickly do that now. And there we go there, we are done. Now I think that's a really professional way of doing things myself personally. Not everyone will agree, and I don't really care. Um, I just think that's a good way to do it. One, it is waterproofed, um, so there's no way water's gonna get in there. If I was to do it the other way around and put bubble wrap and then butcher's paper, the butcher's paper could tear when it gets wet. Um, so for that reason, I always go bubble wrap on top, butcher's paper underneath. Um, but look, it's already got the case. It's already a board game. It's already protected. So I just think that that's all it needs to be. And, uh, and it always seems to work really well for me. The other one as well, I'll do this for Guitar Hero guitars for the, uh, for the consoles and the games. Um, with the, uh, with the PlayStation. So that's another way that you could go ahead and do those sort of really obscure type items. But uh, yeah, I've always done board games like this and uh, it seems to work pretty well for me. My seven dwarf buddies were the next one to sell. I bought these guys at garage sale on Saturday and they've sold in the space of 24 hours. A really, really quick mover. I've already got the box that I'm gonna be putting it in. They fit in perfectly into this box. So that's gonna be good to go. Now, these were awesome. These were big 65 centimeter plush toys. Have a look at them. And they were all brand new with tags, excellent condition. I ended up paying $20 for them. 
for all seven. Every single one of them is in here. Just an awesome purchase at a garage sale. I've ended up selling them for $150 to a viewer of the channel. So thank you very much to that viewer that uh, wanted to get his hands on these. They're going out to uh, South Australia. And uh, yeah, I, look, I don't actually know how much the postage cost is gonna be. I'm just gonna take this box to the post office, put it on the scales, whatever the postage cost is, it'll be. It wasn't sold on eBay. It was actually sold on Facebook Marketplace. He messaged me there, which is a huge benefit to me because it means I don't have to pay the eBay fees. So let's just call it maybe $50 in post to send it off. It'll end up selling for a hundred bucks and I bought it for 20. So the plush toys, I've probably made about 80 bucks in profit. And then the last one was this garage sale CD that I showed you uh, on Saturday. Picked this one up for, I think it was a dollar in the end and it sold for 13 bucks. Queen Greatest Hits, a very quick mover, sold in one hour. Uh, CDs, I'll show you how I ship those ones out. So they are a little bit more prone to, uh, to crack or break. Um, I still put them in the $4.50 tracked envelope. Um, but just like a DVD case, is a bit more durable because of the plastic um, versus the material of a CD case. Generally, yeah, being a bit more thin as well, it generally breaks a little bit easier. So that will still fit into there. I try and make this as thin as possible just so it does still fit into an envelope fine. Um, I'll check to make sure that that's okay before I put this one in, but that's ultimately how I go ahead and do it. I've never had any issues with any damaged cases. Alright guys, I have made it to the post office. I'm about to drop off our 26 sales from the weekend. It was overall $1,100 because I did have another four sales that came through this morning that I'm actually yet to put into the post. That will happen on Wednesday. And when I think back, doing $1,000, I would typically be very excited when I would hit about $1,000 a week. A good six, seven months ago, I, was, I remember being so thrilled to hit 1000 over a week. And now I'm doing it on a weekend. And it just really on reflection makes me think of how far I've been able to come in a 12 month period on eBay. So keep plugging away, keep doing the little things that you need to be doing. I'm gonna put a video right here of five consistent ways to make sure your eBay store continues to tick along how you want it to be. So go and check that one out. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, guys. That is what I get up to every single Monday morning. And uh, it's been really fun having you along for the ride. Thanks for being here. We'll see you soon.